welcome back to the channel today we're doing something a little bit different we're not going for a walk i'm very sorry if you're disappointed what i am gonna do is a video today about learning to love walking in the rain and i'm going to do some other videos on different topics interspersed amongst the normal stuff the other thing i'm going to do is post more regularly so it's going to be a video at least every other Sunday, 6pm. If there's anything else, you know where it will be, Sunday, 6pm. So do keep an eye out for any extra content. So learning to love walking in the rain is not necessarily something that everyone has an ambition for. But if you're outside, the chances are you're going to get caught in it. So it's better to be prepared. Even better, if you can embrace it, there's so much to enjoy and get out of it. Oh my goodness, the rain situation has got even worse. <laughs> it's hood up because so much rain was going in my eyes, I can't even see now. Especially if you're somebody like me, I work in a call centre, I'm there for 12 hours a day. If it's raining on my days off, then I'm not going to miss out on going out. No way. I need that time outside. So hopefully this will help inspire and give you some tips. So first of all, mindset. We've got to have a mindset for going out walking in the rain. Walking in the rain, I typically plan to be out for two to three hours um, before my waterproof starts to soak through. Once you get to that point, possibly not so much fun, but it's really about keeping it off as long as possible and retaining the heat that you have so that you can stay warm, dry as possible and enjoy it. With the mindset, what we're going to do is plan our walk the day before. Don't plan it on the day if you're a great procrastinator like I am, otherwise you might never leave. That happens to me so many times it's a really terrible habit i have so i now try to plan my walk the day before then i've got a bit more commitment behind it pack your bag the day before and have your flask out on the side ready so you can fill that up and you're ready to go another thing with mindset is once we've committed to getting out there we want to commit to actually enjoying it so turning off that it's raining this is really horrible is just something that I have got in the habit of and it gets easier the more you do it. Sometimes you've got to take it out of just that view from your little head and look out to see what the view's like, how nice it is to appreciate some places in the rain. They do take on a different atmosphere. So it can be really enjoyable on a nice day and also really enjoyable in the rain. The next thing is the type of walk that we're going to go on in the rain. My personal preference for a rainy day is a woodlands. Woodlands is absolutely amazing because you do get that little bit of rain protection and protection from the wind. They're also really beautiful places, lots of moss and everything looks a bit more glistening and shiny in woods in the rain. Other types of walks, I particularly like river walks in the rain. Rivers can be a bit dangerous in the rain sometimes, so do be careful if the river's swollen. Obviously, you take that into consideration and perhaps don't visit that place, but there are plenty of safe rivers that you can visit and walk alongside in the rain. Other, even better place is waterfall walks. If you're lucky enough to be able to visit a waterfall, then I would definitely do that. So we've planned our walk, we've committed to the idea, what are we gonna wear? So of course, we're talking about rain. First thing we're gonna talk about is waterproofs. So let me show you mine. So I wear on my top half, this waterproof coat. So I recently bought myself a new Crag Hoppers coat. This one I think is a go outdoors only edition. It's just got the standard waterproofing. So it's waterproof on the outside, then it's got a little mesh layer on the inside, and then it has this waterproof coating 
on the inside as well to keep you dry this one is a particularly good choice because it is actually made from recycled plastic bottles so this particular coat is their mindfully made series and that's made from 35 plastic water bottles i tend to go for um, what's on offer at the time my other coat is a outkit coat i have a few because i do tend to use them for walking and mountain biking so you need to get washed quite a lot on the lower half i have these standard pack and mac waterproof trousers they're pretty small they fit into my bike packing bags and my walking bags pretty easy they don't take up too much space you don't have to commit to wearing them all day you can just pull them on and off as you need them i have never actually worn the fully waterproof walking trousers that you can wear all day i've only ever worn overproof trousers so if you do have any thoughts on those please do share them because i've never tried them so it'd be great to know what you think of them anyway these are the ones that i have beautiful right they've got the typical elasticated waist then they've got side pocket holes and the standard velcro bit at the bottom this could probably do with the wash but i find they keep the rain off for about two to three hours which is just what i need under these i would usually wear leggings or just my walking trousers that's all so with our waterproof clothing on the outside of course the most important thing is to look after it and take care of that if we don't look after it then it's not going to last and there's not going to be any point in using it or even taking it with us so to do that i use these which is the nick wax so i use the tech wash which gets all of the dirt out of the clothing first removes any other chemicals that will stop everything from working then i use the washing direct i did used to think that these didn't work very well but we didn't own a tumble dryer now we own a tumble dryer they work so much better if you can tumble dry them on the high heat setting so below my waterproof outer layers other than my trousers i always dress in layers and i almost have like a uniform of what i wear when i'm walking so to begin with i always start with a merino base layer doesn't matter if it is summer or winter i'm wearing a merino base layer as i say for me it's like a uniform i wear it all the time on my next layer then i would usually choose a woolen jumper i personally like wool because i think it keeps you warm even when it does get damp or wet that's my personal preference a lot of people would like a fleece in particular another good environmentally sound option is polar tech fleece so polar tech fleece again is made from recycled plastic bottles it again also stays warm when it is wet you can also get it quite fine so it doesn't add loads of bulk in your bag so now we've got our outside and our basic layers of what we're gonna wear to keep us warm and dry one thing i do always carry though is a dry bag of extras so i personally think this is super important for if you are stopping and having a break, your body temperature will drop very quickly and it's very difficult to then get warm again. So this I think is essential and this is why these go in the dry bag. So in here, we have, first of all, a woolly hat. So of course we lose a lot of body heat through our heads. So as soon as I stop, straight on with the hat every time i always carry that the next thing is a buff so this is a summer weight buff in the winter i would usually have a fleece lined one but it's really good idea to have one it just stops any rain going down your neck stops any drafts from the wind 
You can also use it to draw on your hands. There's so many things that a buff is good for. So I always carry a buff on me. After that is gloves. So there's nothing worse than having cold, wet hands and trying to do anything or trying to warm them up after doing something. And one thing I always, always, always have, last but not least, is a synthetic jacket. So I do have a puffy down jacket that I have used for years. But one thing I find so frustrating with it is when it gets wet, the down just is useless. It doesn't do anything. And I find the hood is always getting wet and then it's, it's just cold, clammy, damp fabric to stick to your skin. So recently I invested in a primer loft jacket. So this is again a jacket which has some recycled content in it. This one is just the basic outkit one. I will put the links for all of the clothing in the description. They do male and female versions of these. So this jacket takes up about as much room as my down jacket does. That was one of the things I was mostly concerned about was the bulk of a synthetic, but I actually find this packs down just as light and it really keeps me warm. I'm very, very happy with this piece of kit. So we've got those for emergencies if we need to stop unexpectedly and also a break. Obviously with these, we just need to get them on as quickly as possible. It's not good to get cold and then try to warm up. We want to retain as much body heat as possible. One of the things that we haven't talked about yet, and it's a big thing for if it's raining, especially if you're going on to moorland like I do frequently, is your feet. No one likes having cold, wet feet. That is just horrible. It's going to ruin your enjoyment of your experience. So we need to keep those tootsies warm. So the most important thing to me is merino socks. I love them. If they are wet, they keep your feet warm still and they do dry pretty quickly. I just think they're really fantastic. I do buy Teco socks, but they no longer bring them into the UK, unfortunately. So I think I'll be looking at Smart Wool next. There is, of course, the option of waterproof socks. I personally don't wear them for hiking in the day. On Dartmoor, there's a lot of bogs. It easily goes inside the sock. Once it's inside the sock, it just fills up and it's horrible. Your feet get so wet. But what they are good for is if you're camping then at the end of the day, you can dry your feet once you get into your tent, slip a pair of light socks on for the warmth, and then pop your waterproof sock over the top. This gives your feet a chance to be dry all night. This also gives you a chance to pop your boots on if you need to go out of your tent and not get your dry socks completely soaking again. So they're really good for that. Personally, I don't wear them any other time. And of course, shoes. So there's two options here. We've got shoes that pump the water out as we're walking and waterproof boots. So there's an argument for both. One is shoes that pump the water out when you're walking. If you've got merino socks on and your feet are gonna get wet because you're likely to go in a bog a stream, whatever, sometimes it's difficult to get water out of waterproof boots. So these I find really good for those kind of walks where you just need to be comfortable and keep your feet as warm as possible and dry them out as quickly as possible. These also have removable inserts, which you can also dry and squeeze out. I personally really like these shoes. When I walk the water, literally just comes right out. The other option, of course, is the typical 
waterproof boot. So these are the Vivo Barefoot waterproof boots. Everything's pretty waterproof apart from these bits here. The water does tend to get in there. As long as you can keep your feet with the water below there, then you're absolutely fine. But otherwise, it, of course, it does go in. So there's both options. It really depends what sort of walk you're going on. I really hope that you got some helpful tips or inspiration from this video. And next time there's a rainy day coming up, please, please plan on going out and enjoying it. I really hope that you guys take care. Bye.